Hello. Today we're going to take a look at a common way of measuring service level performance. We're going to be taking a look at TP5090 and 99 SLA reports. If you're not familiar, TP stands for top percentile. Often, a lot of performance metrics have historically used average or mean to measure things like SLA performance. We see it all the time in IT language, things like mean time to repair, mean time to resolve, mean time between failures. Mm -hmm. But what we often see with statistics is that the average is sometimes not the best way to analyze information. So let's take a look at an example using the number of times an incident has been reassigned because that has some nice round numbers. Uh, this is a distribution of data. So as you can see, as is common with performance data, we're not looking at a perfect bell curve. There's a big chunk of data at the low end, so a lot of things have been uh, only reassigned once. Uh, and then generally less and less reassignments the further up you go, but there's also some concentration at the high end. Uh, there's a cluster of outliers, so these uh, 12 have actually been reassigned around 100 times, which is a big outlier in relation to the rest of the data. So taking a look at this set of data, here's the average. The average is around five and a half, and as you would expect, the average comes basically towards the center of the data set. Now, obviously, if this was uh, proportional, this 100 would be way off screen, but you know, generally speaking, the average is at the center. On average, our incidents have been reassigned five and a half times. So let's look at what the median is. The median is the 50th percentile. It's the value where half of the values are more and half of the values are less. For this data set, the median, which is also for our purposes what we're calling TP50, that's at exactly 3.0. So you'll notice that the median is much closer to the low end of the curve, which maybe matches our understanding of the distribution of data. That's because the average is more sensitive to the outliers, so that average is being dragged up by these 12 that, are, uh, that were reassigned 100 times, whereas the median answers the question, you know, what do we typically see? Half of the incidents have been reassigned more, and half of the incidents have been reassigned less. So that covers TP50, the, which is also the median. So what's TP90? Mm -hmm. So TP90, or the 90th percentile, means that 90% of our data is below that point. For this data, it's at 10. So 90% of our incidents have been reassigned less than 10 times. So again, this tells us something important. It tells us that, you know, even though our median is about three, anything between three and, you know, 10 is something that, you know, might typically be seen in the data. Everything that's above 10 is truly an outlier. Now, TP99, or the 99th percentile, means that 99% of the data is below that range. It's pretty close to the max of the range. So this lets you know that 99% of our data is below the 100 point. Now, in this case, because of the number of data, the 99th percentile is pretty close to the outlier. But if I had an even more diffuse set of data with even more outliers that were even farther apart from each other, there might even be a big difference between the 99th percentile and the max. So why would we use the 90th and 99th percentile? On their own, they might not be so helpful, but by comparing the 50th, the 90th, and the 99th percentile, you get a much better sense of the data. Let's take a look at this data side by side. So the median, or the TP50, is three reassignments, the 90th percentile is 10 reassignments, and the 99th percentile is 100 reassignments. So what I can easily see just by looking at these values is that typically about half of our reassignments are three or less, but most of our reassignments are definitely less than 10. There is a chunk of outliers though, almost 10%, that can range between 20, 10 and 100. So we have something that's pretty contained to the low numbers, but can range pretty, pretty broadly uh, once you get up to the outliers. That's why you compare these three together. It lets you know the, not only where the typical is, but also lets you understand the range of it. In many cases, although there aren't many outliers, they can have a big impact. We saw how big of an impact it had on the average, but also they may be eating up a big chunk of your resources. This top 9% that uh, get reassigned 100 times probably, probably consumes more resources than many uh, of the three or less put together. 
This also means that TP can be used to measure consistency in service delivery. If the TP90 and the TP99 are close to the TP50, that means that most callers are experiencing roughly the same level of service. Meanwhile, in this scenario, many customers will report having a good experience because their incident is handled quickly, but there's going to be a not insignificant chunk of users who actually experience very terrible service. And if you want to really get to the level of excellent service delivery, you don't want to have some people have a great experience and some people have a terrible experience. You really want to have a consistent level of service across the board. So that's the theory of medians and percentiles and why your service delivery organization should be looking at it. So let's take a look at how Explore Analytics can get this for you for your SLA reports with no code or script required. All right, I'm now in Explore Analytics, uh, my live reporting solution that's connected in real time to ServiceNow. And I'm going to go to create a new report. It's gonna be against my production ServiceNow data against the incident SLA. And for this one, I'm actually going to pull a list view and then we're gonna build a report on top of that. The reason is because Explore Analytics is going to pull the rows and then create a report that aggregates on top of that. Usually Explore Analytics asks ServiceNow to do a lot of the grouping and aggregating, but in situations like median and percentile, we will pull those rows and then build a report on top of it. So now I have a list view that's pulling the data in real time. So let's filter this to be where uh, the SLA um, ended using the field end time during. It'll give us a good window of time and it'll also filter out any uh, SLAs that are in progress. So obviously I could filter this however I need, but for the moment we'll do last year. And then I'm also gonna right click to filter out any canceled SLAs. Those aren't very significant for our reporting. And now we are going to pull into this report any of the fields that we want to report on as part of that aggregate. So one of the fields I want to pull on, report on is going to be the end time. Another field is going to be the business elapse time. We're going to want the assignment group, the priority, and the company. Mm -hmm. We can add any additional fields we want in the future, but for right now, I think this will give us what we need for our reports. So next, we're gonna build a aggregated chart on top of this list view. This is a feature that Explore Analytics calls composite views. I'll go to the file menu and I'll say, create a composite view on this view. And we'll say incident TP 50, 90, 99 timeline. So the composite view is going to have as it, its input those fields that we selected in that initial list. It's still going to be real time against the ServiceNow data, but now I can do charts and pivots and things that have additional functionality from Explore Analytics. So I'm gonna select a timeline. And for the date, I want to use that end time field uh, and I want to do it by month. You could do it by week, you could do it by quarter. For the moment, we'll do it by month. We should have 12 months worth of data. Now, from the values, I'm gonna remove the count field because for the moment in this report, we don't count, care how many SLAs there were. We want to know what the average and the median times were. So I'm gonna to click to remove this and I'm going to drag the business elapsed time into the values. And where it asks for calculation, instead of counting the rows or summing or averaging, because this is a composite view, I now have the capability to select median. So I'm going to call this median and we'll call this uh, median resolution time because maybe that makes more sense to my users. And we're going to click OK. It's as easy as that. We're now calculating in real time the median month over month for this data. And we can see how that changes over time. Now, one of the great things about Explore Analytics is that you can put multiple of these values together. So I'm gonna drag business elapsed time again, and I'm gonna, in this case, select the average that we can compare, average resolution time. This is gonna use that mean, that average. 
and it's going to overlay it with that median. And I'm going to select the merged. So now I can see those two using the same thing. Now, one of the things that you'll notice immediately is that the average resolution time actually varies much more wildly than the median resolution time. And that's not too surprising. We talked about how the average is much more sensitive to the outlier. And therefore, in months where uh, we had particularly strong outliers, it might drag the average resolution time to something that's very different from the median resolution time. It's very easy for me to see that generally our median is between 6 and 12 days to resolve, uh, whereas the average can spike anywhere from 43 days down to 4 days. That's why we're taking a look at this from the perspective of medians rather than the perspective of averages. So now instead of the average, let's add the TP50 and the TP90. So I'm actually going to relabel this to make a little bit more sense. TP50. I'm going to drag the business elapsed time. And then this time I'm going to select percentile. You'll notice I have the option. And if you understand these things, you can select continuous or discrete. I'm going to select the 90th percentile and call this TP90 resolution time. And then do that again, repeating exactly the same steps to get TP99. So now we'll be able to see in one chart overlaid the TP50, 90, and 99. And again, with the TP90 and 99, you see the same effect as the average, right? That's what's letting us see how those outliers are varying over time. Uh, but we are now comparing it sort of apples to apples with that TP50 so that we can see the range. So again, in June, half of our, in, uh, our SLAs were resolved within nine days. Meanwhile, another 40% of them could be as much as 155 days. And another 9% could have been as much as 300 days. So, you know, you might be looking at, uh, at your median and saying, well, overall, we're kind of delivering on a nine day, you know, resolution time. But let's be aware that there's still a significant chunk that might be as much as 313 days. So I, I would have a lot of constructive feedback to give to this service organization. There's a lot of additional features you could bring to bear to understand things better. So one thing I can do is I can edit this and say, give me a reference line. Uh, and that allows me to draw a reference line at, for instance, a target. So for example, if I say, well, our typical, what we're aiming for is at least as good as 14 days and draw that reference line. Now I'll be able to see as part of this report very easily where are, are we or are not we not meeting that. Another thing that we can do is project this into the future. So you'll see that I have the ability to select this exponential smoothing trend that allows us to take rolling averages of the data. And then I can also turn forecasting on this. Uh, and I might want uh, to use a more advanced one that uses seasonality and do it for, let's say, another uh, six months. And click OK. So what we see is that Again, this is why we use a, a slightly more advanced projection, not just a straight line projection. We say that generally speaking, since the middle of the year, all of these uh, are trending downwards. Now we have a detailed video that goes much further into the projections and forecasting. I just wanted to remind you that uh, if you're using Explore Analytics, you can use all of those features. And then you can focus and look on a particular one and, and see that. In any case, we can see that despite some spikes, things here are generally trending in the direction that we want. So now I want to also provide the ability for users to see this and interact with it and get understandings of it in real time on a ServiceNow dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file and we're going to create some parameters so that we can add this to a dashboard. So the parameter allows us to pass information into this report to filter on. So one is that I'm going to have one uh, on the end time field called date so that we can easily slice it by date. And we're going to have one for assignment group. And we're going to also have one for uh, company. So this will allow a user to very easily say, you know, what, what if I'm looking at this report, do I want to slice it by assignment group or company when it's on a dashboard? 
So now I'm going to go to my favorites and I'm going to pull open my existing service level agreement dashboard. And you see that this dashboard already has many other SLA metrics, uh, my scorecard on the SLA achieved, on my availability SLA, you know, some SLA analysis, some dashboard trends, but I want to add this now to that dashboard. I'm going to go, I'm going to find my report that was called TP50 um, incident TB5090. I found that very easily with my uh, type ahead, despite not fully remembering the name. And I'll click OK. So now on this dashboard, I have my TP5090-99 uh, timeline. So now I can say, OK, well, show me that for a particular company like Acme Americas. And it'll update and show that data for that specific company. And I can, within that, select particular assignment groups and, and whatever. So now I have this dashboard that allows me to see all this information, to slice it and dice it and understand it, whether it's you know graphically by a country or if I want to have uh, this kind of pie chart where I can drill down into a particular category within the SLAs. So uh, everything that you need. And then further, if I want to then say, OK, well, show me these hardware SLAs, it'll bring me to this list. And from the list, I can open up the actual SLA definition or the actual incidents that's attached to it directly from there. Now, this is a dashboard within uh, Explore Analytics, but I can add this to ServiceNow or share this and distribute it however I want. I can go to the file menu. I can say publish. So I'll give it a name. And then I can say uh, publish this to ServiceNow and select that ServiceNow dashboard. And once I walk through and click publish, now I have a block that I can add to ServiceNow, which I'll show in a second. I have a URL that I can send directly. I have an embed code. So if I wanted to put this in a customer portal or an intranet portal, any place that accepts HTML embedding, I absolutely can. If I switch over to ServiceNow, this is the out of the box ServiceNow home pages. I can go and click add content. Select Explore Analytics, find the Service Level Agreement View Dashboard. And here it is. So now all of that data, all of that slicing, all of that being able to drill down and drill through is available right here. Lastly, I can also distribute this via email. So if I wanted to schedule this to be sent out, I can schedule this as an email, have it be sent out, distribute it to an email, and set a schedule to that. So now you can see how very quickly I can build an SLA report that uses a fifth median uh, 90th and 99th percentile and allows us to very easily uh, distribute that and get that in front of the folks who are interested. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to understand more, there's more videos, videos on forecasting, videos on SLA and incident aging reports. We also have our uh, Explore Analytics wiki documentation, and you can try a free trial for 30 days against your ServiceNow data today at our website. Thank you very much.